Welcome to Daily Hope. This morning we are looking at 1 Chronicles chapter 16, specifically verse 41, where it says that there were those chosen and designated by name to give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. It's those three words, chosen and designated, that stirred my heart. I remember standing on a Little League baseball field in the heat of the Texas sun, waiting for my name to be called and hoping that I had made the cut and be chosen. But it didn't happen, and I gave up trying. But I also remember my mom taking me to downtown Fort Worth on a Saturday morning to audition to become a member of the touring ensemble of the Texas Boys Choir. I was chosen and I was designated a first alto, and I was one of the 26 young choir boy members who toured Europe that summer. And that moment defined me and set a course for my life. When you know you were chosen, something happens at a soul level, and it touches your identity. David here in this chapter is bringing the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem from Gibeon to unify the nation and make Jerusalem the spiritual and political capital. He appoints Levites to minister, to make petition, to give thanks, and to praise the God of Israel. And chief among them is Asaph, who is a poet and musician in his own right. And David commits to him a song that he's written, a psalm. And in this psalm, there's an encouragement to give thanks, to call on his name, to sing to him, to glory in his holy name. Look to the Lord and seek his face and remember all of his wondrous deeds. David left musicians to minister before the ark of the Lord in Jerusalem, but also He left behind chosen and designated musicians, left them behind in Gibeon to minister at the tabernacle of Moses, the shadow of what Moses saw in heaven. So what's the nugget for us today? What is God saying to us in this chapter? And how did he stir my heart this morning? Well, you and I are chosen in him before the creation of the world, Paul says, writing to the Ephesians. And Jesus says that he chose us. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. There's the, there it is, designated you to bear fruit, to go and to bear fruit. But you, Peter says, are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you. You and I, too, are designated to give glory to God through all that we say and all that we do. When Paul was writing to the Colossian church, he said, Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever you do, work at it, he says, with all of your heart as working for the Lord and not for men, for it is the Lord Christ you are serving. See, we've been left behind here with specific responsibilities, divine appointments, and to await the Lord's coming at the end of the ages. Well, guess what? We're at the end of the ages. So look for and be ready for the divine appointments that God will bring across your path today and trust him for the words to speak and the heart with which to speak them. In other words, live this adventure with Jesus Christ. Let his life out of you. He is about to call us to something far greater than we could ever imagine. And in the meantime, do everything to honor Jesus Christ, the one who chose you in him. For you truly are chosen and beloved in Christ. So as the psalmist 
says, as David writes in this song, cry out, save us, O God. Those around you that are in desperate need, cry out to God on their behalf, that we may give thanks and that we may glory in his praise. So that's it, church. I look forward to hearing the stories of how God is going to use you today. And I'll see you this weekend on campus at the gathering. May God truly and richly bless your life.